much to discuss on this evening's India development debate but we're going to begin by taking a closer look at a very big story which broke nearly 24 hours ago. It started with Pfizer announcing that their vaccine shows an over 90% efficacy. This is the vaccine for COVID-19. What followed was amazing in terms of optimism and hope. Some of the biggest medical experts in the United States are then saying that this could be the game changer, that things could improve by maybe spring of 2021. And of course, global markets and Indian markets rejoicing uh, in flow. But the question is that, is it all it's cracked up to be? There are some questions about how uh, if, uh, how suitable Pfizer's vaccine would be for countries like India. On November 9th evening, probably the most awaited news came on the COVID front. Pfizer and BioNTech announced that their vaccine candidate against COVID-19 has been found more than 90% effective in preventing the disease. The news has kindled hopes for an end to the global pandemic. But there are several steps before the vaccine becomes available and it may not be the best fit for all countries. So what next? For starters, Pfizer and BioNTech are still awaiting safety data which will be available later this month. Once that hurdle is passed, they will need to get the regulators to sign off on their vaccine shot before shipping them. The efficacy rate required by the US FDA is above 50%. Let's take a look at how the vaccine would work. Pfizer and BioNTech vaccine uses messenger RNA technology which relies on tricking the patient's immune system to produce vital harmless proteins to provoke a robust immune system. This is very different from a traditional vaccine which trains your body to recognize and kill proteins produced by pathogens. In terms of how the logistics would work, Pfizer and BioNTech have a $1.95 billion contract with the US government to deliver 100 million vaccine doses and has formed similar agreements with EU, UK, Canada and Japan. They are expected to produce up to 50 million doses or enough vaccine to protect 25 million people this year and will produce up to 1.3 billion doses in 2021. One of the biggest challenges of this vaccine once approved by US FDA is the cold chain system required to transport it across the world. The vaccine needs to be stored between minus 70 to 80 degrees Celsius and while it is rare even in US and European hospitals, there are many countries including India which will not have the necessary infrastructure. Also, based on the supply deal with US, the price tag of the vaccine amounts to $39 with a likely two-dose course of treatment. Pfizer said that it will not charge other developed countries a lower price than what US will pay. However, in India, the health ministry is in talks with the company and is working on regulatory approvals and the logistical requirements. You see, Government of India does not make any discri uh, discrimination between metro and non-metro. Whenever regulatory approvals for vaccines are provided, we have a plan which would ensure that vaccines would be available to all priority population groups, irrespective of the region where they reside. So while the world is happy on this news from the COVID front, it is important to take a breath, stand back and analyze on how we will get this vaccine. Until then, why it is important to follow the protocol of social distancing. All right, uh, important to understand a couple of crucial things as far as the Pfizer vaccine is concerned and not just the Pfizer vaccine. Um, we are in the middle of a race for vaccines all over the world. What works for a country like India or for other Asian nations? Uh, what about the Chinese vaccine? What about the Russian vaccine, the Sputnik? Uh, what seems ahead and what does an RNA vaccine actually mean? I'm going to go across to Dr. Ramanan Lakshmi Narayanan, uh, director at CDDEP, uh, for all of those details. Dr. Ramanan, thank you for speaking with us today. Can you first tell me why the Pfizer vaccine and their results is such a big deal? Why is it being called a game changer? Uh, Tamana, there are a few of these vaccines that are now in phase three. And phase three, as, uh, as the viewership now knows, is a phase at which you uh, test the vaccine in tens of thousands of patients. 
uh, probably over 40,000 patients in the case of the Pfizer vaccine. And, uh, and you're able to see whether it actually protects people from getting COVID disease. Now, we have, uh, uh, you know, the first such evidence, we, we've, we've not really had evidence from the Chinese vaccine or anyone else, but it's good to have this evidence from the Pfizer vaccine. The, the reason why I think the markets are cheering is, first of all, because uh, it's good to have any vaccine work. So that's really good news. Uh, the, the study is not complete yet. Uh, there have only been about, I think, uh, about 80 or 90 infections to date. Uh, my guess would be that uh, that a large number of people in the in the arm of the trial that did not get the vaccine got these infections, and not many people in the vaccine arm got the infections, which would mean that the vaccine has potentially high efficacy. We still don't know how long that protection lasts. Uh, we still don't know whether. Uh, you know, whether this is something which comes with more side effects, you know, again, it has to be done at the full trial stage to see what all of the side effects are. You have to remember, this is a vaccine that people would potentially want to give to a billion people. So the hurdles for a vaccine like this are incredibly high, like we've said from day one. And uh, there's a lot to cheer. I mean, I'm really happy that there's some vaccine that is showing a protective effect, which is, some, you know, something we've not seen quite yet. Uh, and but it's still a long ways to go. And as your clip said just before, this may not be the vaccine that's most suited for India. Why is an RNA vaccine, and I don't know, I'm sure I'm not using the right medical term, but why is a vaccine based on RNA considered better? How is that different? So good question. So this is a vaccine based on messenger RNA. So it basically is, you know, typically vaccines are made by uh, having an inactivated form of the virus or a strand of the virus injected into the body. And in the case of, you know, some of the, um, you know, the oral polio vaccine, it is the live virus itself that we ingest. And the body responds by recognizing that virus, you know, forms, uh, you know, protections and antibodies and immunity to that, you know, the virus. And, uh, and as a result, we're protected the next time we face COVID and uh, you know, the body recognizes it. With the messenger RNA, we're not doing any of that. We're basically are just using, uh, you, know, a, a, you know, essentially a way of tricking the immune system into producing uh, the immunity that we need without necessarily you know, uh, taking in or being, being injected with, uh, with the COVID virus, the coronavirus, either directly or uh, as the Oxford vaccine does, which is using a platform. A platform simply means that you take a different kind of virus, which is an adenovirus in that case, which is harmless to people. You cut the pieces out, which are, you know, one piece out, and then you sub, uh, you replace it with a, a strand from, uh, the COVID, uh, from the coronavirus. And that forms another form of protection because uh, you know, the body then recognizes, uh, you know, this as really being uh, something that it's seen before and therefore protects us. Now, the advantage with the mRNA vaccines is that with a regular vaccine, like an inactivated virus vaccine, you have to produce the virus in large quantities. You have to produce it in extremely biosecure facilities because you don't want the, that virus to get out and infect people. Then you have to inactivate it. Um, you irradiate it or there are many other ways of doing it and then you uh, inject it into people. The mRNA vaccine can just be produced in a lab in large quantities without having to take on that kind of an effort. So from a production standpoint, from a safety standpoint, the mRNA, which by the way, we've never had a vaccine using mRNA. Now that's the big caveat, right? So it's not like we've had lots of mRNA vaccines. This would really be the first major vaccine using mRNA. It's, a, it's definitely a, a cutting edge technology in that sense. Uh, but it certainly has its advantage that we can scale up production much faster than we can for other forms of vaccines. Okay, w one last question, uh, Dr. Ramanan. Now, this vaccine has a 90% efficacy. The final number might be even less. Um, the USA, for example, is okay with a vaccine which has a little over 50% efficacy. To you know, the common man, it sounds like this vaccine works 90% of the time, but 10% of the time it may not. Those odds don't seem very safe. You know, that's a great question. First of all, we don't know if this 90% will hold in the end result. My suspicion is that 
typically vaccine efficacy goes down as we get further on this. Second, we don't know how long it lasts. If it only lasts for two months, does it make much of a difference? And would we be willing to take a 70% efficacious vaccine that where the, the duration of protection lasts for two years or three years, at least a year? So there are multiple parameters involved here, of which efficacy is only one of those parameters. Uh, but I think the main reason why we should be happy is because there is hope that, uh, that vaccines are able to protect against the disease. Now, why it's not an applicable vaccine for India is to do with temperature, it's due with cost. This is likely to be quite an expensive vaccine. We're likely to be, you know, not first in line for this vaccine. And if we had a shot at getting some of this vaccine, uh, we would have to decide, you know, who to prioritize this to. And it would have to be, you know, uh, healthcare workers, doctors who really should get the vaccine first. So still a long way to go. And uh, the reasons for cheer don't necessarily apply to India. But I think we, the whole world should be happy that some vaccine is working. Yeah, I mean, if it's good news, we'll take it. Why not? Uh, but thank you so much, Dr. Ramanan, for joining us and explaining some of these FAQs, as I may put it, uh, which we need to know even as the euphoria and cheer breaks out. Um, thank you for that.